Hello, you are watching Shalom World News. I'm Ruri McLennan coming to you from Glasgow, Scotland. Here are the latest headlines from around the world. Seeking an end to the conflict in Ukraine, the Holy Father Pope Francis will consecrate the warhead nation and Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary on March the 25th, while presiding over the celebration of penance in St Peter's Basilica. According to the director of the Holy See Press Office, Matteo Bruni, a similar consecration will take place simultaneously in the sanctuary of Fatima in Portugal, with this being done by the envoy of the Pope, Cardinal Konrad Krajewski, the papal almoner. Meanwhile, Catholic prelates in Ukraine will lead a nine-day novena starting on March the 17th in preparation for the consecration. During the apparition to three shepherd children in Fatima on July the 13th in 1917, Our Lady asked for the consecration of Russia to her Immaculate Heart, adding that if it were not done, the nation would spread its errors across the world, leading to wars and persecution. Bringing solace and healing to war hit Ukraine, the International Pilgrim Virgin statue will be taken from Fatima in Portugal to the Eastern European country for the first time. It is upon the appeal of Greek Catholic Metropolitan of Lviv Archbishop Ihor Vozniak that the replica of the original statue of Our Lady of Fatima will arrive in Ukraine so that believers can seek her intercession for peace to once again return to the country. The sacred image of Our Lady will remain in Ukraine for a month. It will be taken from the Portuguese capital Lisbon to Krakow in Poland and from there Greek Catholic believers will bring it to Lviv. The sacred image that will be sent to Ukraine is the 13th and last replica of the original image of the Fatima Virgin, sculpted by renowned sculptor José Ferreira Thedim in consultation with the visionary sister Lucia dos Santos. Major Archbishop Sviatoslav Shevchuk of the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church has appealed for quick and decisive diplomatic intervention as the Russian onslaught entered its 18th day. During his daily video message on Monday, the top prelate said that it is not the time for mere statements, but diplomatic solutions to bring an end to war. He also thanked state leaders and members of the global community for their efforts to seek peace. In his address, Major Archbishop Shevchuk stressed that in spite of the non-stop bombings and suffering inflicted on civilians, Ukrainians are demonstrating resilience, thereby proving that the strength of the spirit is more powerful than weapons. He said, quote, The Ukrainian people are affirming their right to exist, their right to freedom and their right to be themselves. He also expressed gratitude to the Holy Father for his repeated appeals to end the carnage. More than 1,000 convents in Poland and Ukraine have opened their doors to welcome Ukrainian refugees. According to a statement issued by the Council of Major Superiors of Congregations of Women Religious in Poland, the 924 Polish convents and 98 in Ukraine are providing material, spiritual and psychological support to Ukrainians fleeing conflict zones. At least 2,400 families are being sheltered, including around 3,000 children. Since the beginning of the Russian invasion, as many as 150 religious congregations in both nations have been serving refugees. As many as 64 Catholic institutions are taking care of 600 orphans, while 420 others are sheltering 3,000 mothers and their children. Meanwhile, the Polish Archbishop Emeritus of Krakow, Cardinal Stanisław Dziewicz, who was the longtime personal secretary of Pope St. John Paul II, said Poles are opening their homes to refugees. The 82-year-old said that it is an unprecedented show of fraternity. In Cambodia, the government has honoured a Catholic bishop for outstanding service to society. Vicar Apostolic of Phnom Penh, Bishop Olivier Michel Marie Schmidt Häusler, was awarded the Grand Order of National Merit by Environment Minister Sam Al Sai at the St. Paul Institute in Takeo Province. The government also wished to honour the contributions of the Catholic Church to education, art, culture, social work, and healthcare. Established in 1995 by King Norodom Sihanouk, the Grand Order of National Merit is awarded to Cambodians or foreign nationals for outstanding service to the country. The bishop, who is of French extract, said the award is due to the collective pastoral and social work of priests, nuns and lay people. He also thanked all missionaries, religious and lay persons. Having come to Cambodia as a young priest in 1998, the bishop was given Cambodian citizenship and numerous other awards for his many contributions. Florida's Governor Ron DeSantis has hailed the passage of two educational bills in the state, 
Reiterating his willingness to sign the bills on Monday, March the 15th, DeSantis applauded the state legislature for advancing the Individual Freedom Act, or HB 7 bill, as well as the Parental Rights in Education bill. While the latter curbs the discussion of sexual orientation and gender identity in classrooms from kindergarten through to grade 3, the former limits racial discussions in classrooms. It does away with lessons that cause discomfort, guilt or any form of psychological distress to the individual based on the acts committed by any individual of the same race, colour, sex or national origin. Both bills were passed by the State House representatives on February the 24th. The bills are now with Governor DeSantis for final approval before they can be enacted. Since their inception, both bills have drawn intense opposition, with them being termed discriminatory and concerning by opponents. In the United States, Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas expressed concern over efforts to politicise the top court, as well as the inclusion of more new justices that might corrode the credibility of the institution. He was speaking in Utah during an event conducted by former Senator Orrin Hatch's foundation. In the nine-member court, Justice Thomas is the longest serving. He disclosed how he is worried about the long-term ramifications of modern trends such as cancel culture and the lack of public debate. Addressing the audience, he said the cavalierly talk about packing the court will ultimately lead to the institution being compromised. He said, quote, by doing this, you continue to chip away at the respect of the institutions that the next generation is going to need if they're going to have civil society. The Chaldean Catholic community in Iraq and around the world will soon have new blesseds as the procedures for the canonization of Archbishop Paulus Farage Raho continues. The martyr prelate is likely to be beatified soon, along with Father Raji Jani and his companions, as well as Sister Cecilia Moshihana of the Sacred Heart. Cardinal Louis Raphael Sacco has reassured believers that they are all waiting to see the martyrs raised to the altar. He made this statement during a homily preached on Monday, March the 14th in the Patriarchate Chapel in Baghdad during the Divine Liturgy, marking the 14th anniversary of the death of Archbishop Raho of Mosul. In September 2016, the Synod of Chaldean Bishops had already opened the process for the canonization of both the Archbishop and the Sister, as well as Father Rajid Jani and the three deacons, Basman Yusuf Daud, Wahid Hana Iso and Ghassan Isam Bidawid, who died with him on June 3rd in 2007 in a terrorist attack in Mosul. Idaho is set to become the latest US state to legalize pro-life laws. On Monday, March the 14th, the Idaho state legislature passed legislation banning abortions after six weeks of pregnancy. The Texas modeled abortion ban allows the immediate family members of the fetus to sue the doctor or medical professional for performing an abortion after a fetal heartbeat is detected. The Fetal Heartbeat Preborn Child Protection Act bill reportedly expands the Fetal Heartbeat Adoption Ban, which was signed into law last year, and it offers exceptions in cases of a medical emergency, rape or incest. Senate Bill 1309 will now be sent to State Governor Brad Little for his final approval before being enacted. The Republican governor is likely to sign the bill. The state currently allows abortions up to 22 weeks of gestation. Recently, Florida House representatives passed legislation banning abortions after 15 weeks of pregnancy. In its first comprehensive human rights report, the United Nations on Tuesday condemned the human rights violations in Myanmar in the backdrop of the military coup since February the 1st in 2021. According to the report of UN High Commissioner for Human Rights Michelle Bachelet, there is clear evidence of war crimes against humanity committed by government troops following the coup. The report stated, quote, Myanmar's military and security forces have shown a flagrant disregard for human life, bombarding populated areas with airstrikes and heavy weapons and deliberately targeting civilians, many of whom have been shot in the head, burned to death, arbitrarily arrested, tortured or used as human shields. Security forces and their associates have killed about 1,600 individuals and imprisoned over 12,500 others since the coup. At least 440,000 people have been displaced and more than 14 million people require immediate humanitarian aid. And those are your latest headlines. Do join us again tomorrow. In the meantime, you can visit swnews.org for more updates. Shalom.